Hi, I'm Morag from Our Permaculture Life and the Permaculture Education Institute and I'm in Mallorca today with Mandy Merkline. And is that how you say your name? Yes, Merkline. I, I yes. do get it right, yes. good, thank you. Yes. So, and we're here at um, Escola Kumar. It's a very special place because yes. there's something about the experiences that you've had that are very similar to mine, but we've only just connected. And yeah. even though we've kind of been in the same world for such a long time, right. and we're standing beside a very special tree, actually. So could, could you just tell us a little bit about what, what, what's, what this place is all about and why this tree is so special to us? Well, this tree is special because it's a local apricot tree, so it's, it's been raised mm. just for this environment. And it's special to me because it was planted with some friends in a and Satish Kumar, mm. who is, I believe, your mentor. Yes. And I'm yep. mine too. Yes. Yeah. Although I wasn't so lucky to go to Schumacher College. Yeah. Satish has been coming to Mallorca every year, pretty much, in the, for the last 14 years. Wow. And he gives Gosh, these wow. wonderful, inspiring talks yep. in October, uh, thanks mm. to the organization Fundación Educación por la Vida, which mm. poco a poco, which means it's one of the principles of permaculture, slow and steady solutions. Oh, which one, uh, uh, So yeah. it's uh, uh, a lovely so that's been going for 14 years. Yeah, he comes here every year and he, he speaks to a group of about six to 800 teachers, wow. many of them from the public schools. Wow, fantastic. And this is set seed all over the island and we wow. have little permaculture fantastic. type and small schools and, yeah. and holistic education wow. is now pretty much a part of our, yeah. and our so, culture here. So tell me a little bit more about Escola Kumar and how this place came to be. Well, it's a wonderful story, actually. Uh, the gentleman who brings Satish was uh, inspired by him up at Schumacher, mm. and his name's Guillaume Ferrer, mm. and he runs these events. Is he from this island? He is. He's yeah. a Mallorquin. Oh, right. okay. And he got so inspired by Satish and, and Schumacher College, mm. he said, you named Schumacher after small is beautiful, Mm. author, Schumacher, E.F. Schumacher, I want to name an institution after you. Wow. And I'm going to call it Escola Kumar. Oh. <laughs> but like many dreams, it had no budget and no place to go, yeah. or no people to yeah, run right. it. It was just a moment of passion. <laughs> But moments of passion can bear fruit, Absolutely. and it, in this case, it did. Yeah. And what happened is, one of the teachers and a daughter, actually, one of the mm. teachers said, "We have a place. We have a villa. Mm. It's a small villa. It's on a three thousand square mm. meter lot, but it might be a good starting place for yeah. your school." Yeah. And that's how it started. And, and Fitchoff came here and to Satish, right. and we all sat around and we decided that they decided uh, with us that permaculture would be a good vehicle. Fantastic. for um, sharing a, sort of a more simple lifestyle, much yeah. like Satish's new yeah. book speaks to, the yeah. beautiful simplicity yeah. of, of and every so, day. So permaculture is very much the foundation of Escola Kumar, yes. and that was decided by Fritjof Capra and Satish Kumar. Right, and, and, so, and, and Yerm, who also had been doing yeah, right. permaculture for quite a while and had a wonderful a permaculture site himself on the island. That's just and brilliant. we were with Permaculture Mediterranea, yep. so we were the obvious organization to help. Mm. So okay. tell us a little bit about um, Permaculture Mediterranean. So that's an organization that started uh, birthed by mentors from Australia. Yes, right. <laughs> um, both Darren uh -huh. Doherty and his wonderful family, Lisa, yeah. okay, started a PDC here. Okay. And then local people like Julio Cantos, mm -hmm. who let's, brought let's us brought together. Is, yeah, and um, Sibylla, who has a center in San Rien mm -hmm. that you've visited. And um, as well as uh, other people just came together. Mm. And then Rosemary Morrow came down and yeah, people right. like yourself yeah. and they've all helped us. Got, and so we, now we have uh, several diploma holders and we do a lot of education work. We do PDCs and we work with schools and we do design sites and we have a lot of fun. You it know, sounds, like regular yeah, permaculture yeah. people. <laughs> yeah. And we grow food. <laughs> so on this site here, this 300 yeah. square meters, you have this amazing food forest that's yeah. surrounding us. It's got so much food. What happens here on this site? So what, here, what here? we do is we build a site with students and people who want to learn about permaculture mm. and we're creating a demonstration site that's accessible to people Good. and we're showing lots of different ways that you can grow food yeah. and you can plan out gardens and we have perennial gardens and we mm. have orchards and gardens and we have mandalas and we have spirals and yeah. so each course we build some new garden nice and it's year-round growing here in yeah. mallorca so yeah it's probably a bit like you Mr. are no, yeah. no breaks no that's right <laughs> and we have, we have yeah. a lot of fun growing food but we tie it in with local economy yeah. and the social aspects of permaculture it's yeah. all sort of embedded yeah so so the group 
that met here the other day and we had a beautiful feast of, yeah. of food that was harvested out of here and cooked on a veranda up that there. Fun, yeah. So that, that group gets together quite often, you say, yeah. and, and also does something really interesting about going around to each other's places. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about that and what else your group does together? Well, what, one of the things that came out of our PDCs is people do, you know, their design project at yeah. the end. And some of them went on to create their own thinkers yeah. and their places and they liked what they saw here. So yeah. we said, well, just copy it, but make it yours. Yeah, do it your right. way. And Excellent. so we have all these different little homesteads on the mm. island where you can go and they rotate every Sunday. Uh, you can get a meal at one, like at yeah. Kanom, or yeah. you can go to Kam Flo, or yeah. you can go to Kan whatever the Fantastic. next one's going to be, yeah. Bustan, yeah. and you can get a lovely meal That's prepared beautiful. out of a person's garden, and it's a great way to bring us all together. Yeah. And then you get to see what other people are doing, yeah. and swap seeds and exactly. plants and everything. All those things happen. And so weekly, that's amazing. Yeah. You know, a lot of the other projects that I've seen in other organizations, it's a monthly thing, which, yeah. which is great, but weekly, that's just well, phenomenal. It, it grew out of time, and yeah. so it's like so many PDCs, yeah. one after another, and people coming out of the yeah. courses are just being inspired in their own yeah. way and we all support each other because it's fun yeah <laughs> and it's know, useful <laughs> since you know i've only been here for a couple of days now but i'm just so amazed at how how you've actually really embodied the whole local food well actually supported the local food movement yeah. you're even saying today about the wheat that's grown here yeah, like i was surprised to find out that it's still wheat grown in mallorca yeah, we have because ancient wheat here we have varieties mm. that are just from mallorca we have shesha we have uh, another several types of yeah. old and wheat still grinding yeah and Local people grow, yeah, 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 they do. It's That's lovely. Just phenomenal. And, then, and, and, yeah. and of course, if, with the changes in temperature of weather a little yeah. bit, you have so early wheats and late wheats. So yeah. something always comes through, yeah. right? Yeah. If you have a diversity. Yeah. Yeah, it's so, just yeah, so wonderful. Nice, yeah. And then, you know, co-ops and you know, yeah. farmer's markets. Yeah, and we have lovely uh, organic farmer's yeah. markets. And, and so it's quite helpful. a challenging thing, really, because you were saying, too, that this community, you have about 600,000 residents of Mallorca. Right. And that swells to about, what, 2 million people, did you say? Or there's 2 million, like 1.3 visitors or something ridiculous. It's some, it's the the it's ratio really of residents, whatever mm. the number is this week, yep. to tourists is, is very uh, unbalanced. Yeah, so we have, yeah. like, um, roughly 13 million visitors and oh, we 13 have 13 million I've got, I've got, I've got that up by a factor of 10 we're definitely gosh. under a million residents at any yeah. one time on the island probably less almost half that yeah, so yeah, it, it, yeah it's uh, we're a little but overwhelmed you, yeah. but <laughs> even despite that you have a really strong local culture yeah. and a strong yeah. local food yeah, culture local, that is a mixture yeah. of people from all over the world yeah. by the sounds of it it's becoming a nice fusion yeah. a respect for local yeah. people local culture local language yeah. local food and uh, re respect for openness. Yeah. And it might seem to do a nice balance with yeah. that. Yeah, and so within that too, you've you've got other things that are going on, like homeschooling, for example. Yes. And that sounds like that's kind of bonded a lot of people together yeah, as part yeah. of it. Yeah, you know, and, and people do sometimes a cusp. They do some homeschooling. They do some, yeah. you know, they integrate their lifestyle with their edu yeah. their children's education. Yeah. You know, and some of that's they, we have a lot of alternative schools. Mm -hmm. And that's nice, both yeah. public schools and private schools yeah. that are trying to do more. They have gardens. And yeah. so we do a lot of youth programs. Yeah. So what inspired you to get started in permaculture in the first <laughs> instance? I mean, that's... Right. Yeah. I was I mean, sort of the rebel biologist in a family full of wonderful artists. Because <laughs> <laughs> you've well, got quite a story. I mean, you were yeah. telling me about how you... you no, you was, did a lot of work in Alaska. Or yeah, and no, I was lucky to go to a small liberal arts school. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a scholarship and that really mm -hmm. helped. And my uh, faculty allowed me to create mm -hmm. our own major. And we, wow. we did sort of a copy of Schumacher without knowing oh, anything about amazing. Schumacher. Yeah, <laughs> so wow. we had very nice teachers that allowed us to create an interdisciplinary program. And I did my thesis on pretty much peak everything, right? Peak yeah, oil and yeah. how that pattern yeah. was. And then I read Bill Mollison's book, and well, I was just hooked. Yeah, and, but yeah. you didn't have the internet then, so. No, I know. <laughs> I ended up doing a lot of wildlife biology. Well, yeah. kind of I built it. And then yeah. I, I, I was able to, to uh, hook into people that had experience doing permaculture, yeah. and, and they mentored me. And so, yeah. Yeah. So, so let's just keep moving around yeah. so people can get a bit of an extra see of what's going on in the background. Saw a bit of soul here. And... Um, so you've got a, a mandala yeah, got, behind us. Yeah, we have this big cardone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so cardone is really my amazing. new favorite. No, I'm easy, just going to turn around this way. So easy vegetable. I highly recommend this. Uh, wonderful. Easy to grow. Yeah. And you eat the stalks. You just that take them delicious. off. That was delicious. We had that yeah. and we put them in. It yeah. takes on the flavor of whatever you're eating. And yeah. you just don't have to think about it. We don't yeah. water it. We have here these local purple 
artichokes. Oh, nice. So they're obviously in the same family. And so you're actually saying with the with the cardon that you that's actually something that you could could use as a chop and a drop. In oh, a, totally. You in can, a Mediterranean. Yeah, and every part of the the plant is edible. Some people use the leaves for a type of tea, yeah, a medicinal right. tea, and then okay. the stalk is. You just strip it down, and, yeah. but you can just pick up the leaf. It's a lovely sure. ch chop and drop. And it's a beautiful plant to it have in a garden. It is very pretty. And, and it creates... gives these huge flowers. These are the flowers from last year. Oh my gosh, I'm trying to see. Those. Yeah, yeah. They're beautiful, bright purple wow. flowers, and bees love them. Yeah. So, so what are some of the other key things, just while we're kind of walking around the garden, that you think, from a Mediterranean perspective, are really important for permaculture? Well, you know, we have these long, dry summers, mm. so we have to figure out how to many of the principles that we learn in permaculture really apply here, yeah. particularly protecting our soil from yeah, okay. extreme temperatures. So we so use of, mulch yeah. and uh, we water using one, I'll show you later, we can, I can show you one of our jars oh, that yeah, we use great. for wine. And yeah. People use those in other places. I think it's a very old technology, yeah. but it still works. Yeah, yeah, it looks really great. And so we try to build, you know, root, steep roots, yeah. build soil. When I came here, this is mostly stone. Yeah, <laughs> and look at it now. I mean, and we it's just, just built up amazing. the soil. So yeah. it shows you, you can grow. This one of the more, more challenging parts of yeah. the island to grow food and yeah. it grows so yeah look at that it's lovely yeah. yeah so I mean I guess in some parts where it looks really stony and rocky it's just because maybe the sheep and goats have been out it's there a lot of overgrazing you know yeah. we used to have shepherds and yeah, it was right. to their advantage to bundle the sheep yes. and keep some yeah. you know let the soil recover and yeah. let the crop the uh, the feed crops recover yeah. for the sheep but since that's Actually, gone out of style they wild. run wild yeah it might look fun, but actually they suffer because yeah. the food's not kept well yeah, on the right. land. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, you look at this land and you think, my gosh, it's so abundant. <laughs> and then you look out in the terraces and yeah. you've got these ancient olive trees, but really nothing much else yeah, growing. Yeah. And you think, uh, I'm sure there's something else that could yeah. could grow in, in and amongst them. Yeah. Uh, it used to be, you know, it used to, well, before we could import, like so many places yeah. in the world, before yeah. you could import food people took care of their yeah. home. Yeah, that's and that's right. the convenience factor yeah. that's a little bit tricky yeah. to, to work with. So the <laughs> other thing that, I, that you were talking about, because I mean, you're here in amongst, which is quite a suburban area yeah. of Mallorca. Right, yeah, there we are, we're right here in the yeah. suburbs. And so like your concept of this being an example of a retro suburbia. Yes, yeah. I was so happy when I saw David Holcomb's book come out yes. and everything, because it was right along what we're trying to do yeah. here. And it was very encouraging. And I was very encouraged also by the website where they have the different case examples. Yes. Now, now they're focused, of course, around where he is mm. in Melbourne and Australia. Yeah. But that's pretty much what we're doing here. Yeah. It's the exact same concept. And so we're trying to show people how you can yeah. use the suburban. Yeah. It's actually perfect for it's creating been, permaculture. It is, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, this scale of production, <laughs> It's really, you can produce so much food oh, yeah. on the More, scale. I can't keep up with no, it. No, I know. I mean, <laughs> and we I, feed all these people yeah, that come right. here. So so. You, you know, I was here yesterday when there was people coming and going all the time. Yeah. There was people coming in the morning from a tour from yeah. the Canary Islands. <laughs> right. And then people came up from they all around. the cuttings and they bring me cuttings. Yeah, and that's right. I saw that. And so yeah. it's lovely. Yeah, yeah it's really nice. It's a wonderful nice. exchange. Yeah. It's a really great so that culture. That can happen. It. Almost every culture has something like a suburbia. Yeah, and, uh, that's it's right. And it's a nice place, that edge area to work. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And I was chatting with David about it because, mm. you know, being in the subtropics, his book was purposefully designed to be very specific to where he lives. Right. And he said his publishers were wanting him to do a wider right. one. He said, no, actually, I'm going to do it all based on yeah. what it is that I know and what my community yeah, knows. And it shows true. a kind of holistic approach yeah. and that we can, in our own climate, like a Mediterranean climate, yeah. subtropical climate, actually create... A, a retro suburbia manual based in our, you know, in our bioregion. Exactly. And that's what we really need yeah. to do. And the examples that we have through, you know, showing examples through video, through blogs, yeah. through writing, right. um, and through having programs like what you do. I mean, you have people coming here all the time, yeah. taking a bit of this out to their own place. And <laughs> that's it's right. Rippling Feeding out. your community yeah. and uh, inspiring people and being inspired by visitors like yourself yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, and the wonderful online programs that I really yeah. enjoy watching your program. So you, even though you're all the way across in Australia, yeah. it, it's, it has, and, and David is too, yeah, it's yeah. had a wonderful impact on us on a little island in the Mediterranean. Yeah, I that's know. the and nice thing about globalization. Isn't, isn't it? That's right. And that's what we that's call, that. isn't it? That's a global approach. Right. <laughs> yeah. 
like, like, like think globally, act locally yeah. in action, in, yeah. in, in, in practice. And so what's, where are you going now with um, Eskola Kumar? What's your plans? Well, we, we, yeah, we've been doing a lot of work with youth. We have this mm. whole program called Youth in Permaculture that we're yeah. working with other partners all over Europe, and we'd love to see that yeah. expand. And then we're, we're thinking of taking it, expanding, trying to reach more people yeah. because we have so many visitors mm. here. Yeah. I, I, I can only reach so many. Yeah. So we've been thinking, we talked with Satish about making the Skala Kumar more accessible uh, and maybe having campuses all over oh, yeah. instead of, you know, building a, a big school. Yeah, um, right. Just encouraging other people to offer the same courses yeah. that have worked so well for us or in their own way. Yeah, that's right. So Contextualize. This, exactly. Yeah. So people so, take this idea and take it every, everywhere. Yeah, and yeah. and, and to also to honor Satish yeah. and, and people like him who yeah, have set such a nice example. Yeah, so I just recently did an interview with Satish when I was at Schumacher College. So I'm going to be posting that as well. And oh, I'll put lovely. a link below to that. And yeah, he's an incredibly special person, isn't he? I mean, right. there's something just so inspiring about what he's done with his life and what he's inspired through his actions. Yeah, for and sure. Then, and then what other people who've been inspired by his actions have gone off to do as exactly. well. And it just keeps rippling. It does. And so I, I love this idea of Eskola Kumara. And I would love to, you know, for the things that I do to be linked in with that oh, as well. Oh, so, a great yeah, honor for yeah. us. And we, could, we would love to build, wherever we can, build synergy. It's yeah. great. And yeah. I, I like that Satish was moved to start Schumacher based on, you know, the great author of yeah. Small is Beautiful. That's right. Yeah. Now we go like almost yeah. this whole idea of small can actually be really powerful and Absolutely. that fractal I sort think, of pattern oh, that yeah. we like in permaculture, yeah. how we can and connect. I think, and I think it's where we can actually have... In a way, it's where we have most power, isn't it? Because we can influence what's close to us. Yeah. And we right. can really do a fantastic job and make yeah. it so cohesive and so beautiful and so attractive that yeah. it does ripple well. Yeah. And I think that's an, it's, yeah, the fact, so it doesn't matter what scale you're working at, because fractals are the same, they just keep repeating and right. repeating, that's don't they? holographic concept. Yeah. But, but it's also, you don't want to, you don't want to repeat in terms of the cookie cutter stuff. Right. It's like, this is what works here. And then what works in some other island or That's some so other country yeah. is contextualized, but it has, like you're saying, the same kind of the core heart, the core ethics. And I think that's where yeah. permaculture really has has its strength. That there are those yeah. ethics, you know, earth care, people yeah. care, fair share. Exactly. And then the principles. But how do you apply those yeah. in any way? Yeah. Whether it be urban or rural or here in New York or in Australia or India or Africa, yeah. then it's all different. It's so true. I, I really like what you're saying. It's that universal principles and ethics and the beautiful diversity mm. to watch them blossom yeah. all over in different yeah. contexts. It's yeah. so fun. It is, isn't it? Yeah, it's it is lovely. Fair. And then, you know, to come halfway around the world, actually, you know, the other side of the world, yeah. if I was back in Australia, I'd be standing on my head, <laughs> you know, to actually come and like... We've only just met. Yeah. I feel like we've known each other forever. I feel because, the same yeah, way. It's a yeah. real fun, yeah, fun, isn't it? fun connection because yeah. we have these things, and these ethics or this vision in common. Yeah. And I'm seeing this vision yeah. all over the place, yeah. in unexpected places, yeah, you know, yeah. people sharing the same. Here's another way we can look at the future. Yeah, that's right. It doesn't have to be so dim. No, this no. This is what Rod Hopkins is talking yeah. about with his yeah. uh, concept of kind of cultivating imagination. Yeah, that's right. Well, gosh, yeah. you go out in the garden, you meet people like yeah. yourself from yeah. all over, and how can you not be inspired? No, that's so. right. And I think, you yeah, know, um, yeah. so Rob was another one that I, I got to see when I was in Totnes, and, and he was talking about that, that we have this, we've kind of grown up in a culture now where we have a dearth of, is that a word? Yeah, anyway, I think so, yeah. And it is a word, isn't I it? Know yeah, we have mean. a dearth of, <laughs> of imagination. Yeah. And then in order for us to move forward, to create regenerative cultures, which is what um, Daniel Val was talking yeah, about this morning. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to link all these different interviews together. You know, they're talking about we need regenerative cultures, not just one, but yeah, many cultures. Many, yeah. But we need we need to be able to imagine them, and that we've actually yeah. through our education system, through our schooling, and through what we're getting in media quite often, is something that we've, we've lost our imagination, and mm. we need to see different ways to open up our hearts and our minds mm. to different ways. And having these examples, these kind of like these beacons everywhere, gives us a chance to kind of open up and yeah. see what's different. Yeah. And I think it's, I think it's, they're such important. Every neighbourhood, every community yeah. needs to have a place that, that opens up people's imaginations. Yeah, I look forward to visiting yeah. some myself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Should we keep walking through yeah, your beautiful sure. garden? Yeah, so just through. need to remember we're connected by um, microphones here, so we all right. Shouldn't, so shouldn't, that's all right. That. <laughs> yeah. So of course we've got lovely lavender. And oh, uh, these, these, these uh, we call them cappuccinos here, but these nasturtiums are, are wonderful for um, 
a ground cover while yeah. I'm waiting to put my tomatoes in. Yeah, so why need it bare? I'm going to twist it. around here so we can. And here yeah, we yeah. have the mandala garden if the entrance is right over here. Yeah. So we do this just to show people, you know, everything doesn't have to be linear. You yeah, can that's you right, can because we do here. get stuck on the whole, the whole kind yeah. of concept of Mr. McGregor's garden, right. doesn't it? And, right. you know, if you're, if you're on a slope, it makes sense to put your pathways oh, yeah, right. in a yeah. certain way. But when you have a flatter land, you know, you can be a little bit more creative with your pathways yeah. and do it by, um, you know, like I know you've been doing a lot by, um, through the educational model of getting students. Like you told us something yeah. about this, a, a example of a book opening over yeah, here. Yeah, Tell us about a, that design. We have a design where we just have a piece of land like this and on yeah. one side we have a little house and you go from zone one to zone five and you can almost read through the pages and then we have the students go out with little cardboard and self-organize themselves yeah. by zone and by element. Yeah. Great. So, so, great. so, so the garden is such a fantastic yeah. teaching tool, and and I find that too. You know, when you when you're teaching, there's only so much you can do inside right. or with a presentation, and you know, images are really powerful. But yeah. actually, being in the yeah. garden is way, way more yeah. powerful. And you have all the tastes and the smells yeah, yeah. and the the textures. Yeah. It's just a, another way yeah. of learning, and this yeah. contextual learning is really important. So, yeah. tell me a little bit more as we're walking. Can we walk up back up this yeah, way. Yeah, sure. Um, tell me a little bit more about. The schools, because you were saying this, you're you're actually going into the university to yeah, we do work some with workshops schools, from teachers. kindergarten to university. Anyone who wants to learn, yeah. And and a lot of people are interested now in holistic learning and and realize the value of projects and and thinking systemically. And permaculture is such a great easy oh, way isn't it? to yeah. provide that type of this that type of thinking and and, and practical and yeah. also hands on. So yeah. So we you know we do quick. Oh, just uh, come this, over this to the a, other side. Yeah, yeah so you know, we do the obvious. We do the herb spirals, yeah. and um, we do these in a course. And this is a typical garden that we put together very quickly. You know, the straw bales with some compost in the middle, a lasagna style. Yep. We chopped up some What's organic it? matter, and then you know, put compost and various yep. carbons. And and, it, and and right now it's just been replanted, so it's a, right. it's a, got a little bit of good to go. So we start really seeing some growth, and then we use these jugs. This is a a garden. This is a. Uh, this way a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. This is, this is a, a earthenware jug that has a hole in it, and that's where you put the water. And it, no, there's no hole in the bottom. It just seeps out when the earth around is dry enough. The water seeps out like osmosis style. And this is a technology that's thousands yeah, of years yes. old, but it's still made today. It still works today. It's made with local clay. The money I spend on this goes to my neighbor who makes these. Instead of buying plastic tubing oh, yeah. and soaker hoses yeah, for my fantastic. irrigation, when this breaks, it goes right back where it belongs. Into the soil, And yep. the soil, there's almost, I mean, there is a firing footprint, but yep. other than that, yep. you know, I went, I went over and picked them up myself. You know? yeah, yeah, it's just around <laughs> it's, the corner. It's just around the corner, and the money stays in the community. Yeah. I think and there's a lot of virtue in this. And they're lovely. And, you know, each country... Each area would want to make a slightly different one. They've been experiment. They put coffee grounds in because oh, your okay. soil, yeah, there's so many right. variables. If you have very clay soil, yes. you might want a slightly different type okay. of material. Oh, that's interesting. And it's really quite yeah. very experimental yeah. and fun. And, and I noticed potters too can have a lot of fun doing this, and they can sell them, and they can make a living. And so it this also supports living. local exactly. local potters because exactly. you know with, they're the sorts of things that have sort of been yeah. relegated to being. You know, like a sort of just sort of sideline artisan hobby type of thing, oh, rather very than practical, actually. Yeah. yeah. And here you can see one. I can oh, yeah, show you them buried. Side. Can you see in yes. here? Uh, Let so me see if like I can. here's one here. Look, these lettuces. They just put the water in there, cover it yeah. up, so there are no mosquitoes. And so you have a little, little and that gives about cup yeah. Here, my tomatoes. So it's about uh, about a. a, a a meter in diameter yeah, from my great. soil, yep. you know, for you, someone else's soil might be more or less. Yeah, great. I've seen these used in other places, in Australia and China. And yeah, I think in India in I remember India, seeing them yep. particularly. So, yep. And they found, they found these as artifacts all over. Oh, really? Yeah, it's quite interesting. Really. Well, it just makes yeah. so much sense, doesn't it? And we, of course, now, we do our little... Yeah, so this here uh, is, this uh, is uh, what person. part of the lunch got cooked on yeah. yesterday. So this is our solar cooker, it's a bit been used so it's a little dirty right now but yeah. it's a lovely very simple design um what's this one particularly called this one's made by a, a micro uh a business called al sol 
A L S O L dot E S in 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 Spain, but yeah. you can get these in all over the world, different yeah. designs. And, yeah. and we use this almost every day. Do you? That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you were cooking up. Um, the so the vegetables yeah. that went in the yeah the paella yeah. Yeah. and we did the sofrit and if I want I could put a rice on here yeah and it boils very water very quickly very too, quickly you don't want to put your hand there too no long. no you can put you, you said you had <laughs> a few holes in your clothes I, I burnt a lot of uh, you know a pot handle a pot yeah carrier, right so. yeah so you have to be real careful but then and then we have of course the hot box we put oh, right next yeah, to that's it right. you can pop it in there yep. and you can finish off the job brilliant you can go to Palma yep. wherever you need to go go yep. to the beach come back yeah and, yep. and it's not nothing's going to burn it's just staying warm and and just cooking well, better. we know at heart most permacultures are lazy. So yeah, <laughs> we try to make then, everything as easy as possible. And you can see over in the distance. I don't know if you can see. There's the actual the pie, big pie of the dish yeah. that we used the yeah, other day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yeah, that. drying in the sun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that was a wonderful big yep. feast. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. That's nice. Yeah, to have everyone there. And so let's just go around over this way. Um, there is a pool behind here that you're working on turning yeah. into a natural pool. Yeah, we're working with the owner. One of the nice things is this place has been gifted for us for us to use to do courses by Concha Vidal, who mm. was the teacher who offered the space. Right. And in exchange, we're fixing it up. So we fixed the cistern, we've collected, we've, uh, my husband's co uh, created a way to collect all the rainwater. Oh, great. And, and now we're putting in solar panels and she's yeah. slowly converted oh, watching fantastic. it. She's so excited about yeah. it because it's bringing together old wisdom that they used to always yeah. do. Well, because behind to, us here we yeah. can see the there's the old cistern. well. Yeah, yeah. And now that's operating again. Yeah. Then we're going to put a solar pump on it. Yeah, nice. a bit, it's a bit you know, yeah yeah you've got to <laughs> it sounds cool but yeah. you know I, I, would get, time, yeah. I would get fit doing it yeah that's true <laughs> but, but i have yeah. to draw a line from yeah, so, yeah so um the idea is mixing new and old technology yeah. and you know there's so many of these big old houses that are empty yeah that you could rent maybe if you fixed yeah. them up but is there really that many that are yeah, oh, there are. I mean, okay. in some places in 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 my in New York and Spain and in Europe in general, there are more empty houses than there are homeless people. You know, it just doesn't yeah, make it doesn't sense. Doesn't make sense, does it? So, if you can create these exchanges, and yeah. of course, there's things to think about yeah, and consider. Yeah. But this is a case of when it's worked beautifully. Yeah. It's been great for us, yeah. and we've been able to inspire all these yeah, people. Yeah. So it's she's, been she's her generosity's reached yeah. way beyond you've, her, and you've created. And now she's going to come back yeah. and and help us run it. So she's already coming so, every week yeah. and helping us it's with an enormous courses. amount of transformation. Yes. Yes. and Lovely. and international reach as well. Yeah. and it's really it feels also like it's also a home too for permaculture Mediterranean. Yeah. Is that is that what it is? Yeah, really, this is way? our our address yeah. right now yeah. but you know it could be any of our thinkers yeah. but right now we use this as our home yeah. address and like yeah. you said we've had Rod Hopkins here, Satish Fitkoff, you, yeah. Rosemary Morris, been a delightful yeah. visitor, yeah. Um, Clayful. And it's just that we're so blessed by yeah. our teachers and all the local teachers yeah. that come yeah. so uh, anyone else wants to come? Yeah yeah <laughs> I, I highly recommend it. it's a beautiful place it's very inspiring right, right. and and also you know just to, to know that you the programs that you run too with, with youth in particular, I'm really excited because you mentioned that before. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of programs for kids yeah. and there's a lot of programs for adults, but there's this yeah. group in the middle. Right. They're actually the group who really are looking for something. That's They're looking so for something true. in their life. And They're looking for direction and, and you know, providing yeah. opportunities where they can actually learn some really practical skills, learn about communication skills, right. and could be bring whatever it is that they're passionate about, whether it be music or technology oh, yeah. or whatever, yeah. right. to come together to explore this. And so this whole idea of youth in permaculture, yeah. and I know that you've just sent some of your um, youth from, the, yeah. from here um, right. over to... We're doing exchanges. Yep. We're working with the Permaculture Association in England yep. and other people, other organizations in, in Europe to create events where youth can come together. Yep. We did one in Italy. There were 60 youth from eight different countries. Fantastic. They did a 10-day permaculture course. Yep. They did a project at the end. Wow. And it was youth themselves that thought about this because we went to one of the European convergences and okay. we saw that missing age yeah. just that you're speaking yeah. about. And they said, well, well, why is that happening? Yeah. And they got talking to the people that started Children in Permaculture is a okay. wonderful project. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. And Rakesh Rootman and Lucy, yeah. who's done a lovely book, and with Guy, yeah. a bunch of them have worked together on that. I'll put the links to those yeah, as well. Yeah, really yep. good resources and great yep. websites. And so that got us excited, and you said, hey, we want to do a youth in permaculture. Mm. So it's a That's new great. project. Yep. Anyone's welcome to jump on board and yeah, give us a hand. Great. Because, you know, I feel like that's kind of where I'm at at the moment with my kids because, you know, I was doing little programs when they were little kids and nature kids were in the middle and then right. young ethos scholars when they were kind of, yeah. 
you know, the 8 to 11, and yeah, now they're starting that. to push the... Right. And, you, and it's kind of one of the inspirations, isn't yeah. it, for what the, the kind of work that you do it's in this so field, is, is you follow where it is that your family is at, and exactly. you can em embody your work yeah. with where your family is needed. And sometimes right. I've, I've also got friends who've had... Um, elderly parents and so then they yeah. start to integrate into sort of accessibility gardens right. and all that kind of yeah, stuff and so that's lovely, yeah. and I think it's really important to really bring our work into our like to personalize our work so exactly. that meeting our, our work needs and our family needs and our community yeah. needs simultaneously so we don't have this kind of work life over here and our family life over there and, and our community service over Absolutely, here and yeah. it's all kind of integrated yeah. Through this really positive regenerative work, and yeah, yeah. it's lovely. I mean, it's, it's a nice. That's what I like about your program. You, you know, talk about is it a lifestyle? Mm. You know, some people say, well, it's a design system. Well, how can you separate the two? Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> For right. For me, I can't. It's no, you know, designing my either. life, and yeah. and I see the point. You know, there's certain skills that are very specific to, yeah. to doing a permaculture site, but it's just it's bled into the all, everything we do now. Yeah. My husband and I, my son, and our fan, yeah. friends and family. Yeah, it's just so it's created a new culture. Yeah. Wasn't that the name yeah. permaculture? Yes. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, that's hanging on a tick, isn't that it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, so thank you so much. Oh, it's been a real for, pleasure. Well, thank you so much for having us, firstly. Oh, it's and been for, lovely. Your family's been oh, great having here. Yeah. They cooked for us. You cooked oh, us a well, huge meal. Well, so. well, you helped Bruce, actually. Bruce is Mandy's husband. And yeah, yeah. thank you to Bruce for, yeah. for really mentoring Hugh through that. I think we're going to get some pretty delicious yeah. meals back home. I'm yeah, really excited encourage about Encourage him to experiment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Make an Australian version. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Well, so, thank you, Mariah. Yeah, thank you. And I, um, So I will put all those links below and um, make sure you subscribe to and um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you next time. Okay, bye. Right, bye. <laughs> thank you. That was really fun. <laughs> thank I really you. enjoyed that.